Okay, so today we're going to be going through a summary of radiographic appearance associated with CT scans. So as a point of reference, we're going to look at a mid-sagittal CT scan. And this is of a three-year-old child and we're looking at a bone window. So what I want you to think about when you're looking at a CT scan is to think of it as if you're looking at a picture or a photograph. So the scan is made up of millions of little voxels, which is the 3D equivalent of a pixel. So why this is important is every single voxel gets assigned what we call a CT number. So our CT number is going to be representative of the density of a particular part of an image, which is going to then be representative of a particular part of the body or the skeleton. So when we're looking at CT numbers, they get mapped on this arbitrary scale, which we refer to as the Hounsfield scale. So the Hounsfield scale is essentially a map of density values that are going to correspond or equate to the value of water. So if we look at water, water is going to be assigned a value of zero. So we have a HU value of zero. Say so HU is just going to be the abbreviation that we use to represent the CT number. So if we think about our Hounsfield scale, and let's take reference our picture, it will start at approximately minus 1000 HU. And this is going to represent our low density structures. So structures such as air, for example, which are going to appear as black on our image. On the other side of the spectrum, when we have densities that, or structures that have a high density, such as bone, they're going to be in this positive range and they are going to appear as our white structure. So they're really gonna stand out. So if we just map on our scale, bone is going to appear with values approximately greater than 500. And then teeth are going to be on our extreme end of the spectrum. So from about 1000 to 3000. So think about any hard substances such as bone, such as teeth, metals, calcifications, they're gonna have a high density, they're a hard tissue, so they're gonna come up as white. So you might then be wondering, well, what about all of the values in between? So our HU or our Hounsfield scale, it represents 256 grayscale values. So we have black, we have white, what is in between? So there's a spectrum of gray values and these are going to also correspond to different tissue types. So for example, between 40 and about 100, we have all of our soft tissue structures. So this is going to include any organs, muscle, vasculature, nerves, um, ligaments, anything soft. On this end of the spectrum, so between minus 400, and minus 100, we have a density corresponding to lung tissue. So for this all to make sense, and with respect to your exams, when I'm asking you about radiographic appearance associated with certain structures, there's specific terminology that we're going to use. So firstly, just remembering that structures such as air, these are going to be our low density structures. Our structures such as bone, teeth, and metal, these are going to be our high density structures. And then everything in between is going to be our intermediate density. So in other words, low, intermediate, high density, these are representative of lay person terminology. Since you're studying anatomy, we need to use the most appropriate anatomical or radiological terminology. So when we're talking about structures that have a low density that are going to be black, we say that these are radiolucent structures. So think of lucent in terms of the wavelengths can actually pass directly through a, a structure. So they're not actually getting absorbed by a particular structure or material such as air. Our intermediate structures then, we say that these are semi-radio-opaque. So with our semi-radio-opaque structures, some wavelengths will actually penetrate or get absorbed by the particular material, but others pass directly through. 
And then for our structures that have a high density, such as bone and teeth, we say that this is radio-opaque. So opaque meaning that most of the wavelengths actually will be absorbed in that particular substance or material, so they're not actually passing through to the film receptor. So you may then be wondering, well, how do I compare or how do I explain substances that have a, the same density? So for example, we know that both bone and teeth are radio-opaque. We know that semi-radio-opaque structures are going to be the brain tissue, so our grey and white matter, as well as the subcutaneous skin surrounding it, as well as fluid inside the brain. So how exactly do we differentiate between these different substances? So I'm going to introduce you then to two new words. So the first one is hyperdense. And the second one is going to be hypodense. So these should be self-explanatory, but just to provide you with an overview, hypodense structures are going to be structures that are more dense compared to that that our reference material is. So for example, teeth are going to be hyperdense compared to bone, meaning that they have a greater density, so they're higher up on our HE scale, and they're also going to be more white or brighter. On our other extreme, hypodense structures are going to be structures that have a lower density. So if we take into account the ventricles, which contain cerebral spinal fluid in the brain, they appear as a darker shade of grey, so they're going to be further down on the HE scale. As a result, they're going to be darker. So I hope that this provides some sort of clarification regarding the appropriate anatomical terminology to use when you're interpreting CT and radiographs. Please don't confuse this with the terminology that we use for MRI scans. This is a completely different ball game and I will be going into that in subsequent videos. Thank you very much for listening.